Hello, everyone. We had the opportunity today to uh, have with us Todd Brian Anunga, all the way from Cameron. Um, he's a midfielder. He's not a goalkeeper, but uh, still, I wanted to you know talk to him, and uh, he has an amazing story. He comes from Africa, from Cameroon, and um, he's had a heck of a, you know, long way to make it to the MLS. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Cooper. <laughs> awesome, man. This kind of yeah. seems like, man, we, we chair locker rooms. You know, what are you doing interviewing me right now? You know, it's kind of it's kind of weird. <laughs> 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 it, is, it is a little bit different but yeah <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> hey brother no but thank you thank you so much for uh for doing this no of course um, yeah so as i record you know as i was talking earlier you come from cameron um you're born and raised over there is uh it's uh i mean it's an amazing country but it's a third world country right if i'm not mistaken Yeah, yeah, yeah. My question will be, um, how was your life growing up uh, in a third world country? As a, as a kid, you know, do you have, do you guys have everything your parents, you know, have to work really hard to give you food and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, growing up in, It's not like your parents don't really like provide that much so it's like you wake up on your own and you have to like you know they provide to like your certain age you know like when i think when i was like already like 10 years old you have kids that are like 10 nine are doing like little businesses they're either selling like peanuts on the street or selling like fruits or something just to make their own money to pay their own school fees because obviously back there you have we pay for school like like all the way to you know so there's not there's not really free school and everything you know it's on your own so it's like you know you have to battle for the meal of the day so yeah that's what it looks like growing up in a third world country but yeah obviously things are way much better than what it used to be back then now it's like a lot of like um the government is doing way more better to improve the lives of the people but back then it used to be like really really tough you know yeah oh, that's crazy Different than uh, than Cuba, hundred uh, percent. You know, Cuba seems to be doing worst. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> how about uh, how about you know, when you you know when you started playing soccer, do you have like shoes and cleats and stuff like that, or you used to play like you know barefoot? No, we played barefooted. We played barefooted on on concrete everywhere on like. I don't even know how to describe like everywhere. Like the amount of times I've bus opened my big toe, it's insane. I just kept playing. Like I have like, yeah, <laughs> always barefooted or with our sand shoes. And when we had when I had the opportunity for my dad to buy me my first soccer cleat, I used it for like I would say maybe three years. Because when it would rip off, we would take it to like we call it. I don't know how you call it in English, but you we it's like a guy that repairs the shoes, so he yeah. can sew the shoes, you know. So it's yeah. like you will wear it and over and over. Oh Opens, yeah, you go back and it's just like <laughs> years. I had the same pair of boots, yeah. I, but yeah, it, it 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 was yeah. That, yeah, I remember those yeah. days. Man. I don't know if you guys have that in Cuba. Oh yeah, we do. <laughs> I actually uh, learned how to yeah you know, how to repair them myself, just because um. It was, you know, expensive and, you know, sometimes you need it to repair them like right away because, you know, you had a game or you have practice yeah. and you only have one. So I learned, yeah. how, to, I learned how to do it myself. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's 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 yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, uh, that's uh, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, I'm sure like that formed you that from your character, you know, like you had to play on the streets, you had to play barefooted, you know, and your character and your body as well because you you know you get tougher you know by by playing on the streets like your feet get tougher your body gets you know gets tougher i mean you are a rock like <laughs> like you are like <laughs> hey you you i mean you intimidate people you know when you're pressing somebody and they have the ball and you're coming yeah. towards them that i mean 
you intimidate people. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I mean, yeah, I think it would up, you know, the amount of time you endure pain and you just keep going. Like, yeah, it's like normal. It would be like normal for us. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's um that's amazing. Uh, my other question will be, you know, fast forward forwarding up a little bit. Um, obviously you made it to the to the U.S., but how did that whole process um went down? You know, what 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 gave you the opportunity to come here to the United States? Yeah, I mean, so we had like a, a camp. Like, you know, so what happens in Africa, it's like a bunch of agents from like America, France, Belgium, Europe, they will come to, to Africa and they will organize these camps of like the best players. And then they will try to pick maybe one or two or three to go on tryouts. So like, um, like fortunately for me, like they had one of those camps and we were like, like what? maybe 300 kids and then they had you know cut it down to about 100 and then made the final to like 50 kids and then we just kept playing scrimmaging scrimmaging and then um that's how finally I, we got picked i think two of us um three of us actually and then we all were lucky to get contracts to go directly to the u.s which was to the usl first um yeah so i think that's that was the process Oh wow! So like from three hundred plus players, you you were the one of the three chosen. That's I mean that's that's impressive. Yeah. Wow! And I know they're in Africa. They're good, really good players. Like people don't talk yeah. about you know you know they think Europe and stuff like that. But like I know there's a lot of good players in Africa. You're very physical, very talented. Uh, yeah. At a young age, it's uh yeah yeah it's crazy. So. Like you know, when you were when you were in Cameron, do you dream on being in the position you are right now? Um, you know, just being in the the MLS established. Do you do you dream do you dream with that when you were back home, or it was just a dream that came, you know, basically along the way? Obviously, like playing soccer, like I mean, we call it football back home, but like that was like the biggest dream of like almost every kid. Why? Because like growing up, we never had like a toy or a PlayStation or all of these games, like we didn't know what that was. So like everyone would gather around a soccer ball to play and that's how we had fun. That's what made us happy. So it's like, you know, like, you know, at the end of the day, I used to remember like if Ronaldinho will watch the game and he does some crazy thing and we all like the next day are all trying to do the same Ronaldinho at, you know, playing out there. So it's like, it was a dream that like I had, I always wanted to do it. I always wanted to play soccer. Um, but yeah, but my mom was was not having it. It was a tough time. She didn't want me to play soccer. So <laughs> yeah, it was difficult. But yeah, that was always been my dream. My dream was I never ever dreamed of coming to America. Never. I thought maybe I would be somewhere in Europe, but like America, I'd never even I didn't even know they played soccer in America. Like <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, I didn't know they played soccer in America. So it's just like, yeah. It happened, it happened that way, and it's just like, yeah. That is that is crazy. Yeah. Um you played in a few teams before making your move to Charleston, uh, you know, to Charleston Battery, and then the MLS side uh Nashville. How has your life changed since you signed your first MLS contract? How has my life changed since I signed my first MLS contract? Yeah, you know, like that's a big step. It you know, for some players from USL to MLS, that's like a big, big step. Like, how has yeah. that changed? Yeah, I don't, I don't think anything changed for me to be honest. I don't know. Like, you mean like in what context though? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like for example, there is a you know there is a level of how can I say like of importance or like um you know how you feel how I mean, you feel like you're a good player when, when you're in the usl but when you make it to the mls you feel like you know your confidence goes up like 
you're you know you're part of a of a bigger project uh a bigger league you know how how like how you know has your mentality changed and of course you know the financial side you know it's better and and you know like how you know how 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 have you been managing that um you know that that change oh i mean i i've handled the change really well i don't think i don't think the change has just been on the on the on the level side of of the playing part but as for my life has been the same thing i i'm still <laughs> i'm still the same tall that you know like same same old i i hang around the same friends that you know like when i come to charleston and we call though i go to the battery games i go look for everybody um But for the level, yeah, obviously I'm happy playing the MLS because obviously it's a step up from the USL. But you know, um, nothing crazy to be to be honest. Um, I still think like the 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 level is different, but I also feel like a lot of people from the USL could make it to the MLS. It's just the mindset. I don't think there's there's anything that different you know like i just it's the mindset that i've noticed with the mls it's like everyone is like way focused on how like i could look at the locker room in the usl it's, it's different like practice is is it's like i don't even know it's very very intense like a game than hmm. than the we you, we will have you know it's like it's, a, it's just the mindset of how things it's just a little bit different but i mean i feel like if you take any player from the usl that has the right mindset mindset and everything and and puts in puts in the work i feel like they will play in the mls i mean that's it that's awesome that is awesome yeah i've i've really noticed the the mentality changed and and also and also in the usl there are a few teams and a few players that has you know they have that mentality obviously the one that are in the, the top you know when they have the right mentality you have a greater chance you know to be at the top Yeah. Yeah. And I was talking to the goalkeeper from uh, Louisville. You know, they've they've been in the at the top for like a few years now, you know. He was telling me that it's just a mentality, you know. Everything everything is from the mentality, uh the coach. And not only a coach, you know, like the people up top, you know, their their mentality is winning, mm -hmm. winning. So they so they provide the best to the players because they wanted to win. So yeah, so that's uh that's a big thing. Yeah. Looking back uh, to where you were in Cameron, would it change anything you went through? Um, Anything I went through? No, because I feel like I am who I am today because of, of what I went through. So I don't think it would change anything. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a, you know, it's a big part of our, of the, you know, the process of the, of our journey. And some people don't know, like they will never know. We might tell them, you know, but until they go through it, they won't know what it is yeah. to, yeah, what it is to be on uh, like on such a need, you know. And, you know, for some of us, it's greater or worse than it, but just looking around and seeing like there's, you know, there's no hope. There's nothing that will, that will I don't know, that will tell you, you know, you will be there one day or, My neighbor did it, you know, like there is, there is nothing. It's, it's just sometimes, you know, when you're a kid and when, you know, when you're uh, in that situation, you just think about, you know, maybe one day I'll leave the country, you know, and be somewhere else and, you know, do better. But sometimes there's that opportunity in your same hometown, you know? So, um, yeah, that's, you know, it's definitely a game changer, you know, when you go through things, When you're little and that form you um to you know to whenever you have much that's not gonna become a problem because you you were you know you didn't have nothing and now you have much and then you know you're just uh, the same person like uh, like you say you hang out with the same friends same old yeah of course <laughs> all right is there anyone in particular that had played an important role in your life um for you to be, to be where you are right now? Um, yeah, I, I would say obviously like my parents, my, my, my dad, my mom, you know, they, they always supported me the, as, as much as they could, obviously. But, but I would also say that like, like, um, 
Michael Hauser. Like, I would say, like, you know, giving me the opportunity to play in the battery, you know, like, yeah, that was a really, I mean, I felt like he really believed in me, like, you know, so obviously, like, I'm always, like, yeah, grateful to him, yeah, in that, in that part, because it's from there that, you know, I was able to, like, pick up myself back and, you know, go to the ambulance. That's, uh, that's really good, and I yeah. remember, I remember your first game. It was, uh, I think it was in the Car Carolina Challenge Cup or whatever. Yeah, I think yeah. you were playing him. You scored an own goal on me in your first <laughs> game. <laughs> you remember? You remember? <laughs> <laughs> I remember the. Um, I remember. Yeah. I remember everything. I remember how it went. How everything, and you know, and how the coach didn't. He didn't look at that. You know, he he saw a great player, and you yeah. know. And you know, like I said, like you, you know, you you grew in like two years. You grew from being a good player to being a great player. And uh, you know, like I say, you, I don't know if you if it's just your body type, but man, every, <laughs> <laughs> man, it's like you went to a gym. You know, you were a pro and everything, but your body was built <laughs> like if you were eight hours at the gym every day. You know what I mean? And <laughs> <laughs> I, <know. laughs> that is that is that is crazy um and what will be your message uh for the younger uh, generation i'll put it this way younger generation that are back home in cameron yeah I mean, like every time i go home because obviously i like to You know, when I go home, you know, the kids see me and they see that, like, hey, this was like, especially the younger ones, they see that, hey, he was just here and he was like us. And today he's this. So it's a great motivation. Every time I make sure I go home because I, you know, I get to see the kids, bring them cleats, bring them jerseys and it gives them hope. And then they believe. They say that, hey, if, if Tal could do it, I could do it. So it's like my message to them all the time when I go there is just hard work hard work because I remember even when I was in I was still back in Cameroon and when I was preparing for all of this you know camps that I knew like the scouts would come I would I would work really hard like really really hard you know to be ready for that so obviously I always tell them be ready be ready at any time because the the world we live in with sports changes so quickly that you don't know exactly who could be watching you at any time so it's like you could go for a friendly game and mm -hmm. The friendly game turns out to 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 something else, you know, to someone taking you or yeah. someone signing you or something. So, yeah, I mean, my message to them is hard work, and even all the kids in the US here, you know, it's like hard work and mindset, bro. Mindset is the biggest. I think if it, it's, it's the biggest thing ever that has changed my life is if you just change your mindset, then you know, things will happen. That is amazing, Ty. And uh, there's a There's a kid that I uh, that I that I train and uh, he you know he he knows you okay. and uh, he you know he wanted he wanted me to ask you this just a simple question he said <laughs> what made what what made you choose the position of a, a midfielder he's up his name is Mike you know what is funny is I never used to play midfielder I used to play if I tell you the position I used to play you will probably laugh That's right I used, no I used to play winger. I can I see used, that. I can see I, that a little bit. And what was funny is I used to be like, I used to be honest, I used to practice a lot of skills. And so like I would do a lot of skills and I was like a winger and I would just run by people and just push people around and cross the ball or go score. It was really funny. But then when I joined on the 17 national team for my country, the coach there was from Germany. He was mm -hmm. like literally a German that mm -hmm. they had. had. And I would play as winger. I would tell him like, hey, I really like to play winger. And then he would like put me at winger, but I would also run all the way back and I would defend so much. And then <laughs> one day, one day we didn't have like midfielders. And then he put me like as a number six. And I like, I think that day I probably won like almost like all my tackles and all my duels. And he was like, yeah, you're going to play here for like the rest of the, the rest of the national, of the camp. And so I just started playing midfield till then like, went up to the under 20s under 23s the midfield and then that was it until i came to america it's funny wow that is that is amazing yeah, yeah. 
Is it my camera is still on? Yes. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Hey, um, well, Ta, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for, uh, you know, for being here, uh, with me and, you know, for just accepting this opportunity, uh, you know, accepting this, uh, this, um, call, you know, this challenge or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I really, I really wanted to to talk to you because I know you have a, you, know, you have a great story. And I, I know this is just what you said, like a little bit, kind of like, you know, we went over things, but I know there's a great story. Uh, yeah. So thank you for that. And uh, I wish you the best on your career. And it's going to, I know it's going to be a long one. You African seems to like last longer than everyone. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like 42 and still like being <laughs> running by people, you know, <laughs> but yeah. you know, uh, Thank you so much. And um, I will, you know, I follow, I follow you. I follow Nashville. I follow uh, the MLS, the USL. I'm always watching. So I have ESPN plus <laughs> that I watch all the, all the games. Uh, but yeah. So uh, thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, Cooper. Thanks for the opportunity, man. I appreciate it.